Okay. Recording in progress. Okay. We will call the Green Bay Sex Offender Residency Board to meet. Uh, we'll take roll call. Got roll, roll call oh. over. You, you normally just. Uh, like yeah, sorry. The three present members here in person, and we have one online. Uh, so we do have one excused absence. That's Dominique. And we're good to proceed. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I need an approval of the agenda for the Wednesday, June 19th meeting. Move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and I need an approval of the minutes from the May 15th, 2024 meeting. Move to approve. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Our first uh, regular business is the appeal of Jesse Christnod, uh requesting to move to 1294 Des Neuer Street. Um, he is appearing via Zoom. Is that correct, Jesse? Can you unmute yourself? Sure. Jesse, can you hear us? He's from prison. Oh. Oh, there you go. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. Can you hear us, Jesse? We can hear you. to take on the next applicant and just refer this one well I think because he's at prison um, I think that makes it a little bit more difficult to move him unless you have a different thought is that the applicant online yes mm -hmm. I know we've given it some time but uh, we could move to <coughs> move it but I'm not sure how we're gonna get back to the applicant. That's my time. fear. Yeah. The board is free to make the motion to move the agenda items around. We'd have to make a motion to suspend the rules to take up different items out of order. Uh, that's certainly within the board's discretion here. If that's something that the board would like to do. Um, as far as <coughs> I'm not sure that there's anything the board can do at this point for the person on online, for the applicant online, but um, we certainly couldn't come back to them if we want to. Okay. It's a little tricky sometimes in prison where they're looking over and stuff. So. I know. That's my concern is that uh, the worker may not be there because I believe he's at uh, Singer B. I mean, we could move to move him to a later spot on the agenda or postpone it to the next meeting. It looks like his release date from prison isn't until July 23rd. 
so we would have another board meeting uh, prior to that date. Somebody wants to make a motion. I move uh, to move on to the next uh, person that is here, and we can see if they figured out their issues in the meantime. All right. Could, could you repeat that again? Move that we suspend him for now and go on to the next uh, applicant. Okay. So just to be clear, we're making a motion to suspend the rules to put this applicant toward the end of the agenda. Next, we'll well, I, would just, I would just flip him with the applicant number two. So moving one to two and two to one. That's fine. As long as you have time to figure out their technology issues. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second that. All right. Are we ready? Oh, there you go. You're good. I'll give you my second. Okay. All right. Technical issues. Okay. Resend my motion. Okay. Thank you. If I could check on the record that you withdraw that motion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Chris Knott, you're appearing before uh, the Green Bay Sex Offender Residency Board. Um, you're requesting to move to, um, is it 1294 Desnoyers Street? Yes. Okay. Um, and you've never been before us before, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to ask is that you go and um, tell us what you were convicted of. And when you tell us what you were convicted of, please don't mention the victim by name or relationship. Uh, we want to know how it uh, came to light with the police. Uh, we do have a representative from the Green Bay Police Department who will confirm um, that the criminal complaint is what you're saying happened. Okay? Okay. All right, so please tell us what you were convicted of. I was convicted of possession of child pornography. Um. I was, my, from what I understand, my uh, position was discovered by an online tip through a service where somebody had learned of something that was posted online by me. Um, it was traced back to my uh, identification. Okay. Was this a one-time deal? Did you frequent child pornography? I sadly I did frequent it. And how often? Um, probably a few times a week. For how many years? Oh, probably going back at least a decade. Off and on, though. It wasn't all the time. It would be here and there every so often. Okay. Um, and how did you get involved looking at child pornography? Um, just kind of sadly just drifted into my life. I was kind of just searching for adult material online, and just one thing led to another. Um, it wasn't something that I initially actively sought out for. It was just something that kind of gradually grew into over a period of time. Okay. Um, and so then once the tip came in, um, did the police come to your house? Um, initially they did. I was not at my house at the time. I was traveling when they pulled me over and then they brought me into the, uh, uh, I believe, the county sheriff's office. All right. And um, did you cooperate with the police? Yes. Okay. And did you take it to trial? No, I uh, pled, out, uh, pled guilty. Okay. And how much time did you get for that? I got eight years in, uh, in and eight years extended supervision. Okay. And you're scheduled to be released at the end of July? Yes, July 23rd. Okay. All right. And um, why is it that you want to move to the 1294? Uh, it's a family residence. It's actually where I grew up. I have family that lives there. We. With the passing of my mother, or myself and my siblings own the house, so it's at least an established residence that I'm familiar with. And there will be people there who can uh, keep eye on me and be in the form of uh, one of my uh, brothers and one of my sisters. Okay. All right. Um, Captain, can you confirm that the uh, information he stated is correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. <clears throat> Does the board have any questions regarding his offense? I do not. None here. Okay. Um, uh, 
Mr. Krishna, we have uh, you have the opportunity if we want to discuss any kind of treatment. Uh, you have that to do that in closed session, or we would remain in public session. Do you have a preference? Um, if it comes to discussing treatment, it does not really matter how you would like to discuss it. Okay, then we'll remain in open session. Um, it's my understanding that you were not required to take any sex offender treatment. Is that correct? Yes, uh, yes that is correct. I was assessed that I did not have a sex offender need at this time uh, by the uh, staff at the Oshkosh Correctional. Okay. Uh, does your agent have any intent on having you do any treatment upon your release? I have not spoken with them on, on that yet, but I'm going under the assumption that most likely I will be doing treatment. If not, more than likely I'll probably do voluntary treatment. Okay. And when you say voluntary treatment, um, why do you say that? Do you feel that you need the treatment? Well, I would figure that it's something that at the very least I know I have an issue and so it would be best to at least get an assessment from someone um, talk to somebody who's professional to see what they would have to say about that and whether or not they feel that I would need additional treatment. I'm not going to go on my just pure amateur assessment or how I feel. That would just be lying to myself at that point. So, and like I said, uh, Peter doesn't suggest anything. At the very least, I would like to, you know, go and talk to somebody to see whether or not they feel I would need treatment if Peter doesn't feel like either. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Uh, when you get released, are, are you going to have a job? I don't have anything currently set up, but I will be looking for employment when I do get released. Yes, I do plan on working. Does the board have any questions for him? Nope. I'm here. Okay. Um, am I correct that you are going to be a lifetime registrant also? Yes. Okay. Are you going to be required to wear the bracelet? Yes. Okay. And do you know for how long the bracelet is that going to be a lifetime? I believe so. Okay. Um, do you know why that is? Um, personally, no, I'm not really 100% sure. They gave me some paperwork that went over various offenses. I don't know if it might be because of my multiple counts with my initial charge. Uh -huh. I've never gotten an exact explanation or have, don't really know who to inquire about that. I was just kind of assuming that was just standard for or part of the course. Yeah, the reason why I ask is um, I've been on this board for a really long time and I mean, first of all, the amount of time you got for possession seems extremely high compared to what we normally see come through. And I typically don't see a lifetime registrant on a possession of child pornography. So I'm just wondering if anyone has explained to you why that is. No, I can't really say so. I do know that over the years I had downloaded quite a significant amount of it. So they might believe that my, the amount that I had downloaded might have justified me being a little, being excessive in my uh, obsession with it. So. Um, that could be one possible explanation. Other than that, I have no reason as to why for the lifetime. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. Set, uh, why the one I have for a lifetime. So when you get released, what's going to stop you from looking at it again? Um, well, I would say probably the main reason is knowing that it's, it's I guess to try to explain is a lot of, People think they get away with stuff because they think they're smarter than people or whatever. And the, the main reason is that prior to this, no one knew what I was doing. It was a secret that I kept to myself, and it's no longer a secret. So I've already had family members who have straight up said to me, if they ever catch me doing it again, they'll be the first ones to turn me in. I know I'm going to be constantly monitoring. I'm going to have my heel constantly looking at me. Um, watching everything that I do. So it's not one of these things I can no longer just go off into the corner and hide. You know, I have to bear everything about what I did to the world. And so it's not like I can keep it a secret anymore. Um, also, as I said, that's one of the other reasons why I would like to, you know, take any treatment programs to ensure that I don't do this again as well. Okay. Um, does the board have anything? Uh, I have some concerns about not having any treatment. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. 
um, normally um, the board members will kind of discuss kind of our feelings before somebody makes a motion. Um, and there's the concern that you haven't had any treatment. And I understand that you said that the doctors at Oshkosh didn't feel you needed treatment. Um, but, you know, that's one big thing that we take into consideration when we approve somebody to live in the city of Green Bay um, is that you have had that treatment and, you know, we want to know what are your triggers, what's going to stop you from doing this again. And without having that treatment, uh, we don't know if, if you'll be successful back in the community. Um, so there is that reservation um, from one of the members. I also feel that way myself. Um, you know, you do have another month uh, before you're actually released from prison. Um, and, you know, I don't know if it's an option for you to look at, you know, talk with your agent to possibly go to the TLP, maybe get that voluntary assessment and see if it's recommended for you to see somebody here on the outside. Um, but those are some just suggestions at this moment. But we do have two other board members, um, you know, that can make their comments. Yeah, we're just chiming in. So I hear what the board members are talking about. I, I understand the concerns on it. One of the things I think about is, well, okay, is the location that they're going to going to increase the chances of them recommitting? And with something like possession, I don't know that the location, the physical location, is going to be more of a factor than if he was somewhere outside of the 1,500 foot radius of a park or a school. And then I, I don't necessarily want to hold it against him that he did have the assessment while in prison and they said he didn't need treatment. So I don't want to hold that against him, but I understand the concerns from some of the board members. So I'm kind of on the fence there. Okay. I <coughs> would like to make a motion, I guess. Okay. Move to deny at this time. Have them reapply next month. Is there a second? I'll second it. Um, so there's a motion on the table to deny 1294 Desnoyers. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. So I believe that's, three you, you said three to one. Uh, so, Mr. Chris, not at this time, you are not approved to reside at that address. Um, you kind of heard the board's uh, recommendations as to what we would like to see before you come back before us. Okay. Um, is there a way to get a transcript of those recommendations so I know who to contact in regards to this? Dan, will send up what you get back in. Yes. Uh, our um, law clerk will send um, what you would need to do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. The next appeal is Patrick Colther. Yes. Okay. Please come forward. All right. Um, so, Patrick, you were here back in September of 2021, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, I believe, do, do the board, were you guys here? Nope. No, okay. Do you want him to kind of go over everything since you weren't here? Or were the notes enough? I think the notes were enough for me. The notes were okay. Okay. Pete? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So, um, Patrick, uh, when you were here back in September of 2021, the board denied you to reside at the 490 Polaris Road, correct? Correct. And do you remember why we denied you? I had not had any treatment. Okay. And um, I know you had written a letter, right, to us? Yes. Stating that um, you, you've changed. Um, have you received treatment? I have been going to a therapist who actually is um, certified for uh, sex offender treatment. We didn't specifically go to that, but we have discussed a lot of it. Okay, and I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that if you wish to discuss your treatment. That's fine. Okay, thank you. All right, um, did you provide any documentation or 
Do you have anything from your therapist that you are in therapy? Because I didn't see anything in your packet. Uh, I, no, I guess I didn't know that I needed to. Yeah, we kind of, um, we do prefer that because you could just tell us that you were seeing somebody and I don't know that. My therapist is actually in the, he's, he's, on he's the waiting right now. Oh, so, in, in the. So I thought that him actually talking himself. Oh, would, would oh, he's on the yes. um, Zoom? Timothy Smith is his name. Oh, okay. Um, so you're okay if Mr. Smith tells us how you're doing in, in yes. therapy? Yes. Okay. Mr. Smith? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, if you could just state your name and address for the record. Yes, Timothy Smith. And I'm sorry, my address? Yes, you can use your uh, business address. Okay, sure, yes. It's uh, Reach Counseling, and that's 1509 South Commercial Street in Nina. 54956, I believe, the zip, the zip code. Um, I always get that one mixed up. I always have to look for the zip code. So. Okay. So, um, how long have you been seeing Mr. Colthorn? Um, it's been a little over a year now. Okay. And um, can you kind of discuss, like, how he's been doing, things that you've talked about, how he is progressing? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, he, when he originally came in, his big thing was I, I need to figure out what happened that I got to the point that I was looking at child pornography. So really what we've been working on, it's, because I am, I do do regular sex offender treatment as well, um, but Patrick came out of his own free will. He wasn't actually referred by his agent to go through treatment. So I made, made more so made his treatment uh, focusing on what happened that got him there. So we talked a lot about his depression, um, a lot about how this was a pornography addiction that just spiraled out of control. Um, and the depression that we're talking about is, you know, what, he's, what he was going through at the time, what he's still going through, but he's in a much better spot. He's medicated now. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't, I, we did a, um, the Seaport score, which is a, um, recommendation guideline for, um, recidivism rate for someone who views child pornography. Um, the maximum score on it's out of seven. So obviously the, the higher the score, the, um, greater the recidivism risk is. Uh, Patrick actually got a zero. Um, I've actually never seen that on the Seaport because I, I work a lot with um, clients who are sex offenders that are on the, on the federal probation and parole. Um, but he did score a zero, so his recidivism rate there would also only be 2.5%. And, and how often do you see him? Um, I see him usually once every other week. So by bi monthly. Okay. Bi weekly? No, bi monthly. Twice a oh, month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And does any of the board have questions for him? No. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry if that was long winded. I apologize. Nope. I'm a little nervous talking in front of people. No, All that's right. fine. We appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, it's my understanding, Patrick, that you want to move to Green Bay because you're having a difficult time finding permanent housing in Oshkosh. Um, are you working in yeah. Oshkosh? I am. And, and what do you do down there? Uh, I work at a plastics factory. Okay. And if you were approved, um, I mean, do you think it would be difficult to find a job up here? No, I don't. Have you looked at jobs up here? Not yet. Uh, I intend to go to the same agency that I went through before because it basically I went there the next day they had me a job and I started the very next week. So. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So what other kind of changes have you made since um, we saw you back in 2021? Well, as as I said, um, I. Um, I've been pretty much just minding my own business, working, 
seeing my kids. I have uh, chaperones so that I'm able to see my kids and start to rebuild my relationship with them. It's kind of hard because I only see them like every other week. But um, as it goes for the pornography, I, I don't look at pornography. Um, and that kind of pornography, I would never, ever look at again. I don't know what I was thinking when I was justifying even, you know, looking at something like that. Okay. Even though it was something that had been going on for like five years, it just spiraled down and at the point when I was arrested and everything, I was in my lowest point. And I'm, I'm a lot more level-headed now. Um, I mean, I can talk in front of people. I couldn't do that before, so. Okay. Um, and when you say some of that, like, uh, is it because of the depression? I mean, what, why do you think, I know, I know your therapist said that, you know, it was, you're in a better spot because you're medicated and, yes. you know, it was depression. But, I mean, why do you think you looked at it? Why do I? Um, I was focusing on the past and the stuff that I was actually mainly focusing on were um, teenager, teenage girls that were 16, 17 years old. Um, that does not mean that that was on, that was the only thing that was my computer though because I had downloaded multiple zip files and everything and it had been on my computer and I had deleted it, they recovered it, and but I didn't hide it or anything. Um, and um, yeah, I really just wanted kind of things back to the way when I was younger. And so I started fantasizing about girls like when I met my wife. And when you started looking at this pornography, how old were you? Uh, early, late 30s, early 40s, I would say. Okay. Okay. Um, and were you having difficulties with your wife at the time? I was. Okay. Not that that's a justification. No. But no, that's there's no acceptable justification yeah. for my actions. Okay. Um, and so you want to live with your mom and your dad, is that correct? I do. All right. Um, the house that I'll be moving in is will to me. So it would be probably the place I would die. Okay. All right. And um, your agent is in approval of the move if it's approved? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, does the board have any questions? <coughs> has the transfer been accepted for you to come to Brown County and get a PO? Um, what I'm doing is I'm waiting until January to move here. January 11th, I will not be uh, on paper anymore. So that won't be an issue. I won't have a PO. I will still have a representative through the sex offender registry in uh, Madison, oh. which I haven't been in contact with them. At, at one point, they will, because I will be on the registry for an additional 14 years. So, so you don't want to move here until January? Correct. Oh, I didn't realize that. Um, that kind of changes things for me. Um, January is a far, kind of far off right now. I was told I wasn't able to come in front of the board six uh, months before I get off paper. <coughs> That's why I did it. Um, I, I don't know that rule. Uh, I don't my, know what that is. My PO told me that. Oh. Do you know anything about that, Logan? That's not information that I could corroborate, uh, not to discredit him or anything. Yeah. That's not information that I could verify at this, yeah. at this time. It, it sounds like he's saying that it's a PO. So it's your PO. Yeah, so to verify. Yeah. You know, and I... I went to Bayo County. Okay. So I'm just going to say, you know, a lot could happen from now until January. Um, typically, we like to approve somebody as close to that move-in date or deny somebody as close to that move-in date as possible because again, a lot could change. Um, you know, right now you may be doing well, but in four or five months, things could take a, a dramatic change, correct? Um, so I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, because of that, um, I would not be willing to approve you right now. 
uh, but we do have other board members here who, um, you know, they may feel differently. I just have to come back in December, I think, is the answer to this. I don't have any problem approving uh, him for this, but again, I agree with what Heidi said. Lots of things can change. You can't prove somebody this far ahead of time. There's something wrong. So. Well, I'm just trying to get everything figured out, you know, yep. um, <coughs> I'm struggling financially right now. Um, I had a roommate, I don't have a roommate anymore, so it's just me. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't want to have to worry about changing POs, it'd just be another thing that I have to deal with, and if I just waited until after I was off paper, then that would just simplify things for me. That's fine, but then just come back uh, apply for the board meeting in December. Yeah, I mean, it was again. That's I and I, I now as I read your letter again, I do see that you say January of twenty five, um, but I also thought we had a letter in here from your parents. Um, you know, who were concerned that you know you're probably going to end up homeless if we don't allow you to live with them. Where I'm staying, I can stay for now, um, but I can't just stay there. And that was the thing. I'm Meaning you can't stay there? I can stay there for now, but I didn't want to overstay my welcome. So <coughs> if they had an idea that, yes, I am leaving, then that's another thing for, you know, that they don't have to worry about. Because mm -hmm. I'm renting it from his parents. But yes, oh. Sorry, Eddie, go ahead. I was just going to let the board know that there are two additional people who have requested to speak on this item, so there may be some other answers that you could add, a question you could ask. For sure, the other sure. Um, Alex, did you have a question for him? Another question is to my comment on that is I, I'm not too concerned about the time frame. Uh, sure, he could do something in the next four to five months, but he could do that if we approved him today and he moved in tomorrow. He could still do something in those four or five months. I can understand him wanting to plan, and I respect that. Um, I guess I, I take a different side of that issue. Thank you. Okay. Um, we do have two people that want to speak um, for or against him, so if the first person is... Uh, I think the first person that wrote was uh, Angela Corthorn. If you would like to... Uh, yes, Angela. Um, yeah, you can come on and have a seat next to Patrick. If you want to, pull, I can pull the chair up for you. Oh. Um, and then we'll, you, you have the name and uh, address written down? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can right Oh, so we just need you to state your name and address for the record, please. Angela Cather, um, 420 South Heron Street, here. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. I just wrote something. Sure. Um, I'm Patrick's ex-wife and the mother of his two kids. We were married from August 2003 to October of 18. I understand why the board is cautious to allow Patrick to move back to Brown County to live with his parents. If I didn't know Patrick personally and only knew of his crime, I would be concerned also as to who is moving into my community. Knowing the strides Patrick is taking to better himself and his mental health, I can only think of the benefits of having him move closer to his kids. He can be more involved with school, doctor's appointments, and mental health appointments. Both of my our kids are in therapy. Um, the kids will be able to see him more frequently and be able to recreate the important father-child bond and relationship that has been strained for the last six years. Patrick has served his time, and now his kids need him to be a bigger part of their lives, and living in Brown County will help that. Preparing for this meeting has not been easy, and has brought up a lot of memories of the most difficult day of my life. But despite all of that, I know happy Patrick. I know that having Patrick closer to his kids is what's best for them. Patrick and I will be able to truly co-parent 
and work towards being a better team for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you're good. And the Second next one we have is Gary. Okay. Then if you could also just state your name and address for the record, please. Gary Cawthorn, 490 Polaris Road, Green Bay. Okay. I'm Patrick's father. We're aware of the circumstances and the severity of his offense. We've seen a great deal of improvement. Um, He's very, you know, the, the reason we're here now is because of information he got from his parole officer that he needed to get things started at this time. And uh, we, uh, we've got a place for him. We can better help him financially. Um, he um, <coughs> um, well, one of the other reasons I haven't talked to him about this, but we're all getting older, both my wife and him, uh, my wife and me. And my wife, frankly, has occasional cognitive issues, and his being in the household would greatly help us. And uh, he's doing the best he can. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to say one other thing. <coughs> um, I was going to, uh, if I was approved, um, since according to the statutes here, um, it is for residing only. I was actually going to start coming up and staying with my parents overnight on the weekends so I could have additional time with my kids and my family. Okay. <clears throat> Captain uh, Opperman, do you know the rules behind that? Because I think there might be something to, you know, how many nights you can stay over if you're not approved at a location before it becomes an issue. I don't, I'm sorry. Oh, that's something that you'll want to look into uh, if you do choose to stay over there for a few nights a month. I know there are some rules around it, so I don't know exactly what they are. Yeah, my PO has nothing, no problem with it as long as it's, we fo follow the rules that exist here. In, okay. And I looked them up and I, I saw resides. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, I am kind of mixed um, because it is so far, but by you saying that maybe you would be coming up here um, more weekends, um, you know, or whatever, mm -hmm. spending more time, I think by if we would approve you, that would protect your family from being fined for having you stay there. Yeah. Um, so... That, that does give me a little bit of a different feeling, and um, I'm sorry, I really would not want to put your ex-wife through that again, to have her come back in a later date and time to, to speak on your behalf, which you're very lucky that she did that. Does it make any difference if we put a time start on, like approved for January 1st of 2025? Well, does matter? Yeah, so, but I'm thinking that if we, say we did want to approve him, if we approved him, he could come up here and spend, you know, a week up here, or, you know, he, he wouldn't have to follow that couch hopping like most people have to do, um, where his parents wouldn't be fined for that. Um, Yeah, I mean, I do. I think I would lean more towards approving him now versus making everybody come back. And then that, you would just be able to move in at any point in time. You know, maybe you would change your mind and say you would just apply for the transfer despite only having six months left. Who knows? 
Um, but that's, I think, kind of where maybe I would be leaning towards now after hearing everybody. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept address specific. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I think I, I missed who was the second just for my own. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yep. it. Okay, so you are approved to reside at the uh, 490 Polaris Road. Um, so you could start hanging out there as much as you want at this point. Okay. Thank okay? you very much. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, the next appeal is Ricky Havers. Full disclosure, Ricky is an actual <coughs> client of mine. I will be abstaining. All right. Uh, Ricky, you have never been here before us, correct? Never. Okay. So what we're going to ask is um, that you uh, tell us what you were convicted of, um, how the police got involved, and um, we do have a representative from the Green Bay Police Department to confirm that information, so try to be as accurate as you possibly can. When you talk about the um, situation, please don't name the victim by name or relationship. Okay? So go ahead and tell us what you were convicted of. I was charged with um, causing a minor to abuse sexual activity. Um, this happened um, back on October 8th. Speak up, Ricky. Yeah. I was, I was a very, very bad alcoholic. I apparently went into a grocery store with my cell phone. I had some sexual content on the, on the phone, on a video of me. And for whatever reason, I guess I had a plane at the checkout, and a young female cashier actually saw it and called the manager. I guess she just saw it for a second, but for some reason I had a plane, and I don't even recall how or why I would have done that, but that's what happened. And then, not even knowing that I did that, it was about 11, 11 days later that the police actually came to my apartment and arrested me and asked me if I knew what, I, what happened on October 8th. And I said, I had no idea. I really didn't. I was on like a, a really bad drunk. I, I was drinking heavy alcohol. Um, I, uh, I was getting really bad. I had too much time on my hands. And it, it progressed where I was having blackouts, and that I was I was I was shocked. But it, it told me what had happened, and um, yeah, I I don't know what else to say. It just was something that I can't believe that it's what, how, or why that happened. I've never thought of doing anything like that. Never did anything like, like that before, and I'm so ashamed and regretful and. It's, yeah, it's been pretty much a nightmare ever since. I did seven months in jail. I've only been out a month. Um, yeah, now I'm a felon, a sex offender. And that is just really detrimental when my son and daughter and everybody it's just like never, like I said, I've never done anything like that. And nothing in the past, they were, they were like all shocked. So I'm just kind of, a, my whole life ever since I've been like a nightmare. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my life back on track and then right now I'm just trying to get a job. Trying to find a place to stay, which I, I hope I can stay at my brother's. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just going in circles some days. I get a lot of stress and anxiety, so I um, probably have to see somebody for that. Just to kind of calm me down so I can concentrate on what I need to do most. Um, Okay, hold on. Uh, Captain, uh, I'm not sure if you were able to hear everything he said, but um, is his version accurate? Uh, well, it was hard at first to hear, but basically my understanding of this is that he claimed that he found the cell phone and then put it in the victim's face. Um, and it, there were videos or images of him doing sexual acts on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, but, uh, Ricky, you said you were intoxicated at the time? Yeah, I was, I get, I was on a bed for a few days, and I, I don't know 
why, I mean, I had no recollection of a couple days that had gone by. And uh, yeah, I was not eating, I was sleeping. And yeah, the blackouts start occurring when that gets to that point. So I, I, I didn't even realize what was happening. So, uh, okay. Um, so right now you're currently um, homeless, is that correct? Yeah, that's why they put put the GPS on. Okay. Um, so, uh, you said you just got out of jail a month ago? Yeah, the 15th. So, did you stay in jail the entire time? Is, uh, seven months, 210 days. Okay. Um, and where were you living prior to that? Over on um, 18, 19 August, an apartment to a new cab. Did you, were you, did you live by yourself? Yes. Okay, so you lost your apartment there? Correct, because you can only go on a maximum of 90 days, and they did hold it for that long. So um, I contacted my governor, and she was able to move everything out and save a lot of my stuff. Okay. So. All right. Um, and what did you do for a job before you were arrested? I was working through Curative Connections um, with the senior um, STEP program, senior training and employment program. I worked at... Um, ADRC I was a couple of years ago. I was on a program for about four, almost four years. Worked at Goodwill West. The last place I worked at was um, Manor for Life. Just uh, working in the kitchen, helping with the pantry, um, unloading the trucks, a little bit of everything. So okay. that was pretty much my last job. Okay. Um, and um, I'm not sure if you heard me with the other gentleman, but um, if we want to talk about treatment, do you have the opportunity to do that in closed session or we would remain in public session? Do you have a preference? It, we can talk about here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it doesn't look like um, you did any kind of sex offender treatment. Um, was it court ordered that you do any um, sex offender treatment? The only treatment um, recommended or as part of the um, requirements was um, AODA. AODA. Which I wanted to do. I've been to the FQ before and Willow Creek, and um, I, it helped a lot. But I said, uh, obviously, I need to again uh, um, intensive outpatient. My um, POA recommended also, and I definitely um, know I need that and <coughs> want to do that. Okay, but you haven't done any of that no, yet? No. Okay. And she wants me to go through um, the sex offender treatment also, and I said, yeah, I mean, that's whatever it takes, whatever I need, whatever she feels I need, I said, I'll be okay. more than willing. Uh, and then you, on your, oh, also thinking for change, that's a referral. You haven't done that kind no, of treatment. No, okay. Um, you know, typically we like to see people who have had treatment, um, you know, especially um, if there's, th this is me speaking right now. If you have alcohol or drug issues, um, you know, maybe you're going to be more apt to do something that you normally wouldn't do. Like you said, you were completely intoxicated and you don't know what provoked you to do that. Well, sometimes alcohol and drugs have that effect on you. So I, I will be honest, I'm a little bit nervous to have you. You've only been out of jail a month. Um, and without any kind of treatment, whether AODA treatment or sex offender treatment, I'm a little bit leery about having you stay on the Morrow Street address. Um, I know that Craig is um, not going to participate in this because he does work with you, um, but um, we have Pete and Alex. Who says so? It, when that's, I, I just want to remind you, when it does come time to vote, that if you would state for the record that you your reasons for why you may or may not participate in that conversation. So just want to sure. Okay. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you other two have any you know feelings or thoughts on the matter? I, I do want to say oh. that to me that, it looks I'm like... I'm sorry, if you aren't, if you're not going to participate, so you shouldn't say anything. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Okay. Unless you're trying to say that you're not going to participate. Yeah, yeah that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Heidi, I agree with your concerns on it. I would want to see something with uh, the alcohol, if he's got any type of, um, you know, analysis from somebody that can help us understand if he's got a hold of it or not before we approve somebody uh, living within 1,500 feet of a place where children congregate, you'd be <coughs> that you know, if he is still drinking, that he would do something, even if he doesn't mean to. Um, I would still have concerns about this one. Okay. Pete? I, I agree with Alex. 
Okay. Um, do, uh, do, does anyone want to entertain a, a, a vote or a, a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to deny uh, the applicant's request um, with the caveat that after some treatment, please come back with a request. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, is this where he should say that you I abstain because Ricky is an active client of mine at this time. Okay. Um, all in favor for that vote? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. So, Ricky, at this time you are denied, um, but as you heard, we really do want to see you get some treatment. So that doesn't mean that you can't come back before us, but you need to provide us that you've gotten some kind of treatment. I understand. Okay? All right. Thank you. Well, Ricky, thank you. Okay. Uh, the next appeal we have is Anthony Jervis uh, requesting to move to 509 North Chestnut Avenue. Hi. Uh, so this is your first time appearing before the board, correct? Yes. Okay. So as you um, heard, uh, we're going to ask you to uh, tell us what you were convicted of, how it all came about, how the police were involved. Again, please don't mention the victim's name um, or relationship. Okay. Okay. Um, but before we get started on your crime, I just wanted to say you listed that your current address is 509 North Chestnut, but that you're wanting to move to 509. No, yes. The, the, what, when I got off paper, I was told by my agent that I wouldn't have to come in front of the board. I owned the house before the incident. Oh. And then uh, about a month, ago, not a month, not even a month, a uh, 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 community cop came to my house and told me that I, according to the city laws, I had to come in front of the board. I've been at my house at the original resident since I've been on paper. Uh, so fit, almost 15 years. Second time in front of us. Yeah. So I've done all my uh, assessments. I went to sex offender. Uh, oh, we'll talk about that yeah, in a moment. I'm just saying that, yeah, that yeah. that's what that was. That's sure. why it's a big turn for me. Okay. Thank you for explaining that, yeah. though. So, okay, if you could just go ahead and tell us what you were um, charged and convicted of. Okay, I was convicted of uh, sexual assault of a child under the age of 16. Uh, it uh, started, I come home, I work at a, I worked at a bar. I've had uh, mental, like, uh, issues for, uh, like, vic playing a victim, so I drink a lot to cover that up. I uh, come home and uh, laid in bed and didn't realize where I was and uh, touched the bottom of my of uh, my victim and uh, put my hand on the inside thigh, realized what I was doing and where I was and stopped. She got up and left. And then, uh, what was it, uh, my wife the next morning, who's here right now, came and told me what I did, and uh, uh, the cops weren't, didn't come right away. Uh, two days later, I was drunk, and I, I felt bad for what I did, and laid next to the bed, and was trying to beg for forgiveness for my victim, but it, it again, I was drunk. It's, it, it, was, it was not a, a happy scene. So uh, then the cops came, uh, I was, uh, allowed to stay in the house until until the uh, uh, I went to court got out of court and then was took him from the house and then back, came back after so I was convicted for uh, three years probation uh, for my offense I pleaded uh, I didn't go to trial okay uh, captain is that correct it's close. There were two separate incidents. One where he put his hand on the buttocks of the victim, and then a separate one where he put uh, his hands between her legs on top of her vagina. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you did um, three years probation for that, and uh, you're no longer on paper, correct? No. Yes. Okay. Um, and that happened back in 2010? Yes. Okay. And 
um, any trouble since 2010? No. Nope. Okay. Um, like, I, I went to therapy and uh, confronted, like, all the problems that I was having with uh, my, a lot of it was growing up. Uh, parents were divorced and that kind of thing. And I confronted all that. I no longer hold things in. I don't drink nor uh, uh, and I don't I just I work take care of my family and where do you work at KI okay and how long have you been there 14 years okay okay um, I, I know that you know you kind of touched a little bit on the treatment there but you know you do have the opportunity to go in closed session or yes. you would remain in public yep. you're okay with staying in public yes okay yep. okay um, and so um, you didn't have to do any sex offender treatment? I, I'm not sure how that worked, but I, I, I think I was ordered to, and I did. I stayed in there as long as I could okay. until, my, until uh, my paperwork was done. And then uh, I did uh, AODA assessment and uh, drug alcohol classes, 28 weeks uh, outpatient. I did that. And uh, I, I got... Uh, a tremendous uh, family. That, sorry. Where'd you go for sex offender treatment? Um, right, uh, Dave. I can't think of his last name. He's like right over here at the okay. Family Services. Okay. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions for him? No. Yeah. I'll just ask. Did you miss on the application? There's a place to put that information and supporting documents. I think you're the second one today that. It was, I didn't, uh, because it was so long ago, I didn't know if I needed to, if I needed to put those in there. I apologize for that. I didn't, I was, because it was so long ago, I can't find any of these documents. I've tried to get the, uh, to get my license back and I, I can't get the, uh, the, the documentation from uh, I was told to come here, but not not today. But I mean, come here and, and ask the uh, the clerk if uh, they have it on file. But I I went to the uh, my uh, probation and parole office and they they have no uh, they haven't got back to me. Okay. I I called the uh, uh, place too that I did it and uh, they they haven't got back to me either. Okay. All right. Um, and you have someone who wants to speak on? Um, My wife. Yep. Okay, if you could please come forward. We just ask that you state your name and the address for record, please. Don Jervis, 509 North Chestnut. Okay. Um, I wasn't, I don't have anything prepared. That's okay. I just want to say that um, I've been, I've known him since he was 17. Um, we dated, had our kids, then made it official and got married in 2003. Um, he's always um, had his demons when we were first dating and um, he, he overcame them um, as a result of this I guess but he's been sober and he's had a good job and the, the lifestyle that he had back in those days was not conducive to him growing at all. Um, he was a bouncer at a bar, you know, and um, with all the issues that he had, it wasn't good. But um, he works at KI. I want to make sure, I always have to say KI, the actual manufacturing plant, not the, everyone thinks of KI Center when we say that, so I yeah, just want to make sure. He, yeah. he, he's a hardworking man. He works the third shift. Um, awesome husband and father. And this was a one-off. I don't know. I, I really, this does, this title is not him. Um, I don't know how long, I mean, I guess it's lifetime. Um, it happened as it, as it, as the papers show. Um, but at the time, I can't say at the time, we had all of our kids already and nothing was there. There was no sign of this. I, um, it was a struggle for me 
because when the offense happened, CPS was surprised <laughs> because we went to them. They left a note on our door. They called me on the cell phone. I happened to be shopping. I came home. He was up getting dressed. We went straight to the center and they're like, you know, this doesn't happen. It's like, it happened. I don't, he did, did, didn't have an excellent recollection of it. Um, I guess just to overshare a little bit, his mind at that time, that particular day, was in a really bad spot because he had, can I say it? He found out that his father may not be his father. And if we all got the time to go through his childhood, but all of the times that he tried to, that he did things that were, you know, he, he was a bad boy, you know. Um, he always wanted his father's approval and his father loves him, you wouldn't know biologically or not. And when he found out that this man knows that he might not be his father, it broke up. And he was, I come from a very conservative family. Um, drinking was not in our, my vocabulary at the time or nothing. So when you, call, when you say someone's an alcoholic, when you're coming from my point of view, I thought 24-7 Joe, not functioning, he's drunk. That wasn't him. He was a binger. But there were, <coughs> on the night that this happened, my daughter ran up to me and told me right away. I went downstairs right away. I couldn't get him to wake up. In a perfect world, I probably should have called someone right then so that officials could see how he was. But <coughs> And now also, I never heard of alcohol poisoning. Probably was close to that. I mean, I'm telling you, he's a big guy. I was kicking him. And also, if the individual involved, little short, even for her, you know, half pint, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. And I'm going to just go on, so better stop. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever felt um, uncomfortable? Like, uh, do you have daughters? That's why I, oh, see, I went on a tangent. Yes. Okay. When he, he was allowed to live in our house. CPS did not want to press any charges. It was up to the DA's office. Um, it was almost a year, I want to say, before a subpoena was mailed to us. Um, so then he, he went to court, and the judge said, y your family's been through enough, no jail time. But he was, of course, put on probation. And I'll never forget that either. He, the first day he was in probation, he called me at work. I used to work at Associated Bank. And he said, um, I can't come home. And to me, that didn't make any sense um, because he's been home, you know. And so I was worried because we had four kids, um, four kids under the age of 15, 16. And now here he is. He's expected to go out on his own, find a job that's good enough to support himself and help me out. I was working two jobs to try and make it. was a very hard time. Uh -huh. But like I said, this guy doesn't deserve the title he was given, but it is what it is. He, he did what he did. I can understand. But he's also been compliant with the county, but we were told it's different. Like the sex offender registry, yeah. e every year he signs in. In fact, it was this year that you had to go in personally and get his picture taken and everything. So this <sighs> was something that we're trying to get past. And then this kind of just brought all up, up again. Sure. And it just didn't make sense to me. But okay. All right. Uh, does the board have any questions for her? I do not. Okay. No. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you, you've sat through a couple other uh, individuals and you know typically we do like to see documentation um, that you've gone through treatment um, but I'm this is 14 years old and at no point am I minimizing it but you haven't been in any trouble since then looking at your prior history before 2010 you had some you know issues yeah. um, I, I I really wouldn't have a, a concern whatsoever of approving you to stay at uh, the 509 North Chestnut. But we have two other or three other board members yeah, that 
I'm sorry. This is an old case. Uh, to me, it was more about alcohol than it was about anything else, and th that issue has been addressed. And uh, to take a man out of the home that he's been living in doesn't make any sense to me, so I'm going to vote for approval. And I agree with that. It sounds like you've got a very good wife that's going to keep you on track. Yep. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion? Move to approve address specific. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Okay. You're approved to stay there. Um, obviously, if you decide to sell it and move, you have to come back before I, us. I got that. Thank okay? You. Yep. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. All right. The next appeal is Tony Hobson requesting to move to 716 Bond Street. Uh, Mr. Hobson, you've never been here before, correct? Correct. All right. So um, kind of a very similar situation. You list your current address as 716 Bond Street, and you're requesting to move there. Yes. So how does that play into effect here? Well, uh, me and my girlfriend, we've been living together for like uh, over like 17 years. So where we have lived, that's why I've been living with her. 17 years? Yeah, we've been together 17 years. Uh, and, uh, we'll let you talk. And, uh, and uh, that's, uh, we just been living together, so we moved to 716 Bond Street. And so that we wanted to live there, so that's why. I okay. didn't know, I, I didn't know I had to come down through here, because that's my first time going there. But I was covering with the sex offender registration. I didn't know I had to come through this right here. I didn't sure. know that the officer came down there to my house. Oh, so somebody came, the police came to your house to say? Uh, I have to uh, come down come down to the hall to talk to a counselor. So okay. we, to, uh, we approved to live while we live there. Okay. And um, how long ago was that that they came by? I think it was last month. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Um, I mean, just because we do kind of need to kind of have everyone kind of understand, we do want you to tell us what you were. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, is this correct on here that it's a juvenile offense? The box is checked. No, you. I would confirm with Captain Andy. Yeah, uh, Captain. Um, on his uh, application, he has the conviction type was juvenile, but I'm thinking that he that it, it's an adult case. Are you able to confirm that? Actually, I do remember that the judgment of conviction was in. This is, this is in Milwaukee County. Yes. Milwaukee case. Yep. So give me a second just to review the top portion uh, ages. The victim was obviously a, a child. Yep. I'm looking at his age. Yeah, I'm thinking you were 20. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure this so long ago. Yeah. 19, 20, 20 years ago. Yeah, so it, it looks like uh, the date on this is DOB to, is a 75, so um, the first count was in 94, so I believe he would have been 19. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I understand that it was a very long time ago, but we do still want you to kind of tell us what you were charged with and convicted of. I was uh, convicted of second degree sex assault of a child. And so when I say that we want you to tell us about it, like, I, I need you to be detailed. Like, what, what did you do? Um, you know, uh, did you know the victim was yeah, their I knew, age? I knew, I knew the victim. We was at a party. Okay. And there was a lot of drinking. And a lot of, it was just a lot of drinking and drugs going on. And so we all, we all endured and all of that. And so uh, we were all in the basement and drinking and all, all of a sudden, the females start coming down. One paying attention who it was or, or nothing. We were just we were just having fun, and I had sex with this young girl. Didn't realize that she was a kid, and uh, and when it happened, my uh, my sister told me what happened, and I felt so bad about what happened. I let I tried to let the, that alcohol take over what I was what, uh, about what I was supposed to be doing, and I was and I, and I heard that young girl's life. And that wasn't that, that wasn't my intent to do. I was out there to have fun, not to hurt someone's life. Okay. 
Um, when did you know that um, she was only 14? I didn't know until I went to jail. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, Captain, I'm going to gather you probably don't have a copy of the criminal complaint on that case. I do. It's very, oh. it's very minimal as far as details. Yeah. Um, it looks like the, the victim identified this as they were dating. And I see a couple acts of intercourse uh, in here. Uh, other than that, there's there's not much else in here. Okay. Thank you. So. I didn't see I didn't see myself dating her. You what? I didn't see myself dating her. You didn't see yourself yeah, dating no. her? No, I didn't. I wasn't dating her. I, I, it was just I just had sex with her. It wasn't. She wasn't like my girlfriend. Not like that. Okay. No, it wasn't nothing like that. Okay. I just felt bad that I had sex with her. That's okay. okay. Yeah, th this indicates that this is this is from the other side of it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, his statement from the victim, but she says that they met the above named defendant. They were dating since June of '94, so from approximately August '94 to January of '95, um, and that they had numerous acts, but there's only two acts of intercourse indicated in here and um, that basically they were dancing that he kissed her asked her to go into a room and subsequently he was begging her to have sex with him and uh, she finally gave in so I mean there's literally four paragraphs five paragraphs in here and they're not very large okay all right Thank you. Okay. Um, does anyone have questions regarding his offense? No. Okay. Um, again, you know, typically we ask for documentation of, um, you know, any kind of treatment and, and things that you have gone through. I had took, uh, and I took sex with treatment when I was in prison. Oh, okay. Um, where, which prison did you do Oshkosh. your? Uh, at Oshkosh? Yeah. Okay, so you you went to prison in 1995, mm -hmm. and you were there for five years. Did you serve the full five years? Uh, I got out. I got out after I had did my uh, program. I got out. Did I? I had went back for uh, probation violation. Not seeing my PO. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they actually gave you then sex offender treatment while yeah. you were at Oshkosh. I, I took SO, uh, the SOT. Okay. Um, and do you remember much about that treatment? I remember it's <laughs> I can flag flag member of it like what uh, your pressure or what what push you to what 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 you do. For me, it's my surroundings. The surroundings I hang around with they were nothing but alcoholics and drug dealers and uh, gang bangers. Once I changed myself from my surroundings, my life been totally different. Ever since I haven't caught it, no sexual assault case no more. I call them misdemeanor charges, but all that but all that other. I just changed my whole life. That's why I came to uh, Green Bay, so I can live a different life. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you said when did you move to Green Bay? Last week. Last week? No. I said, can I speak? Oh. Uh, oh. Two thousand and eight. Okay. Sure. Can Can you just give us a couple? Because uh, I got a couple questions yet. Um. So. 2008, you moved up here to Green Bay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, I, just kind of looking through your kind of criminal history here a little bit. So, in um, 2010, you had a Milwaukee County case for um, your sex registry violation. So, you must because, not have been reported. Because I didn't have a, a, a stable address at the time. Okay. And so, uh, and then I had to get the, uh, the number again. To, uh, so I, I can give my address. So once I got all that situated, that's the only time because I didn't have no no stable place at the time. But I, well, after I gave them the address, and then once I moved, they get I gave them address every time I moved, and and so I I, I wouldn't be up under that. Okay, okay. Um, and then uh, 2014 here in Brown County, you had um, some forgeries. Yeah. Okay. I, I was got nothing, didn't have no money, 
And so I tried to make a little, a little money or something. It's just guys like Tom, I can, you can make a little change and cash these checks if you cash these checks. So I ain't having so I just went and cashed the check. When I'm thinking about the consequences, I just cashed out there looking there trying to get some money. Okay. And for that, you were put on probation, right? Yes. And you're done with probation? Yes. Okay. Um, and then in 2019, you had, so at that time, you listed your address as 606 North Ashland. Yeah, we were living there. But I thought you said earlier you've been living at this address no, for said, 17 I've in, years. I've been in, I said I've been with I've been her. in Green Bay. I've okay. Been, and I've been with her for 17 years. Okay. No. I'm, okay, just, okay. So then you had a possession of a firearm. Yes. It was a firearm in my uh, truck. Uh, it was two people in there, so... Then about it, uh, it admit to it, so we both got charged with the firearm because the truck was mine. So I, they charged me with it. Okay. All right. And then that's all the trouble that you've yeah. pretty much been in. I know. I just work. <coughs> I just work every day. You come home. Okay. And where do you work at? Alive and kicking the sanitation. Where? Alive and kicking it at the pizza. Oh, place. oh yeah, yeah, the pizza place. Okay. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Um, okay, does anyone have questions for him? Okay, ma'am, if you want to come up and um, speak, you just need, again, please state your name and address for the record. Okay, I'm kind of nervous. No, no need to burn nervous. Um, my name is Pamela Payne. I live at 716 Bond Street. Okay. Um, um, I met Tony in 2006 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I had three children, two adults, and my youngest child. And um, I, I knew about the situation because I have a brother also that's a sex registered sex And he helped me raise my baby girl. She 18, she graduated from high school. Her daddy died when she was one. But he, I made sure he complied with registry and all, but I didn't know about ordinance, or I would have been down here too. But I did not know about the ordinance. And he's a hard worker, a good, well she, she calls him dad. She don't say stepdad or anything, she says dad. She's 18 now, she graduated, she's doing good. Um, he works really hard. And that sex offender stuff really doesn't, like, it's who he is, that's not him. You know, that's just, uh, oh, I'm so nervous. Um, Younger. Mm -hmm. um, he, he be around my older, my adult kids, my grandkids, I got two grandkids. You know, we trust Tony, you know. Um, we came to Green Bay for a new start, as also as myself. And when we got here, we, you know, he was coming to do the picture thing, the swab, and we was never told that we had to come in front of the board, mm -hmm. or I would have been in front of the board because I don't play when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that's serious. And when the officer came. She gave him a citation, but at the time, like we told her, we didn't know or we would have been came in front of the board, filled out the application, but we didn't. I didn't know about orders. I knew he had to comply with the sex offender registry, and I knew I couldn't declarate for Halloween and put candy out or none of that stuff because my brother, my baby brother, is a registered sex offender. But I kind of knew the stuff from him, but I didn't never hear about ordinance. But and we apologize for that. And but he's a good person. We okay. just need a chance. Thank okay. Y'all. Thank you. Okay. Um. <clears throat> well. Um. I'll. I'll just kind of tell you how I feel. Um. Initially, when um I read your packet. Um, I don't typically like to approve people from other counties because Brown County, we have enough of our own sex offenders and they have a difficult time finding locations. 
Um, so for you to be able to explain that you've been here for the last 17 years, that really does kind of help me. Um, and it, it obviously changed my mind. Um, again, you know, you've been living at the same address for how long? Um, your crime was from, you know, over 20 years ago. Um, almost 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I would not have a problem with you continuing to reside on the Bond Street address. I agree. The case is 30 years old. He's working and doing what he's supposed to do. It's just kind of ridiculous. Anyone else? I agree with you guys. Yeah. Alex? Motion to approve address specific. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you are good to continue living at the 716 Bond, but please know that if you ever do decide to move from there, you do have to come before us, okay? Do we need a paper or anything? They'll send you something in the mail. Yes. The city will send. Today, but you will get something in the mail from, uh, from our, de our department. Oh, that's right. Thank in case the police come by and say, you know, the city's got to stand on the porch. He come, they come by and say, you're supposed to be here. I'm going to jail. No, you won't be going to no. jail. Okay. No, you won't, won't be going to jail. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. The last one. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there any other discussions that we need to have? Oh, thank you, Captain. You're good. Appreciate the help. Um, anything we need to discuss? No? Okay, our next meeting is scheduled for July 17th at 4 o'clock. We'll see everybody then. Move to adjourn. Oh, yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Got all that there, Logan? Recording stopped. Well, got through all five of them. Record.